I'm going to start something a little bit different as I carve this one out this week. I'm going to uh, still, you know, record a little, little burst at a time and put it all together. But I think what I'm going to do is also talk about what I'm doing in between. So I don't know if as some of you guys fast forward through the, the carving bits, maybe you do, maybe you don't, but I'm going to talk about each little bit and like little different techniques as I'm working on them. So brand new block. This block is 16 inches wide by 22 inches tall. So it prints very nicely on an 18 by 24 inch sheet of paper with a one inch border around the whole piece. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to each piece of wood is very different. I'm going to test out an area of the wood. This part of the print isn't going to exist when I print it. I don't need this wood here. So I'm just going to, I'm going to this little area here and I'm just going to test the wood. Carves very nicely against the grain. Carves good at, oh, with the grain. One thing I'm noticing is that it's a little fuzzy away from the grain. So I'm just going to, or with the grain but it's mostly good. A little bit fuzzy on this line right here. Um, I think it's gonna carve pretty nicely. I don't need to make any special considerations when I'm doing it. One more thing I want to test is how it behaves when I do my scoring technique. So what I mean is I'm, I'm gonna go away with a uh, width against the grain with this one. So against the grain. And then sometimes when I score it, these little bits will pop off, but it's not doing it with this piece of wood. So I should be pretty good to do that. Um, you know, I'll just give it a little bit of, and it, oh, it pops off a little bit right in, right in here. You see a little bit of uh, chipping, but it's not too bad. And it shouldn't be something I should have to worry with, with this piece of wood. So that's a good thing. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and start carving for real now. I'm gonna go ahead and start with the eye. I always feel that's a really nice place to start. I'm just gonna one stroke follow the inside edge of this line that I've drawn with my tool and just carve out and draw against the inside edge of that, of those lines that are marked there. Sweet. Back with the eye, and I want to get perfect little circles here. So I like to carve these circles against the grain. I'm just going to do a score mark in the center of each one of these circles with my X-Acto blade. And that score mark will allow me to carve up to that line. So first I'm going to carve up to that line there, and it's going to pop off at that point, and I can't go any further than that. Grab a larger U gouge since we've got a larger circle to carve. Pop up to that point, pop up to that point. So now we've got half of the circles carved out. And now to carve out the other half. Nice and easy, same technique. Pop it out. You see how once it gets to that point, it, it pops away and then there's going to be a little bit extra in there and just chip that away from a couple different angles. Same deal here with the smaller ones. You just got to be a little bit more careful. Pop it out. Pop it out. Boom. I've got these lines that are coming down the forehead there to indicate the, the plane of the top of the forehead that it's kind of flat up there. And sometimes I like to uh, soften that up and add a little bit of changing in value by just removing a little bit of that line. So I'm gonna go down the whole line and just do little half cuts into the line just to give me a little bit of value change with those lines, a little bit of area of interest, so to say, with these little, these little marks. For this tear duct here, I'm gonna do the same thing with, I'm gonna score the inside of it up to where I wanna to carve to. Do a little score there, and I'm gonna get my little U gouge, and I'm just gonna go right up to the score mark, pop that away. Now I'm gonna grab my V gouge, which is a different shape altogether, and just kind of get the rest of it out very carefully and just pop it on out there. Great, nice clean line. 
Lissi. All right, so I've messed up right here on this tooth. You can see there's a, a gap in the line in which I was not wanting. So what I'm going to do is in this area, I'm going to draw that tooth again. It's something like that. And what I'm going to do now is this line, because I don't I don't remember I don't need this area here. So I'm going to carve that tooth line. All right, that looks good. And I'm gonna come this way. And I'm gonna see what direction I made there. It's about like that. And I'm just gonna slide it out. So now I should have a piece that fits okay enough into this little this little tooth spot here. Let me get my tweezers. All right, here it is. See if we can get it in there. See if it looks good. Not too bad. I'm gonna I'm gonna take some glue and I'm gonna put it down, and then we'll have a, a relatively fixed little mark there. All, all I'm gonna use is just some wood glue. I just put that back in a spot there, and it should be good. From sh should be good as new, good as new. And now after some delicate work with my tweezers, and this is an awl, it's just just awl, and I have got that piece into place. I've got some wood glue on it. It is glued down. And once it dries, it should be good as new. So I've got these uh, these handful of lines on the back of the hand here that I'm gonna be carving away. I think I'm gonna make an executive decision here. And I'm gonna make a zigzag pattern with these. So, um, here we go. So there's the top of the zigzag. I need to rotate the block around. And I'm gonna do the same to the back, but except I'm just gonna go in between each mark that I've already made. And there we've got a nice little zigzag uh, design on the back of the hand. Now I've got to carve the, the bumpy back here. I've already did a little portion up here that's similar to that, so I'm gonna treat it the same way. Down here, everywhere there's a spot, I'm just gonna carve up to that mark, and I'm not gonna worry about it. And it's, uh... So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna carve the top of each of the humps, so to say, just to get a white area first. I've got that done. And this is gonna be more of like a mid-tone mid space. So I'm going to be using small little strokes a lot in here so that when it prints, it's going to pick up all those little marks and it'll read it as noise and it'll mix with the white around it in your head uh, to create a gray tone, kind of like this. And then I'm just going to just make little bumpy marks like that all over the place to create some value. Just like that. A little bit of an update. You can see how all those little marks work together to create value on the back there. Kind of similar to what I did up here. A little bit different though, because there's more spots down here than there were up here. Um, now I just gotta I'm gonna work on his throat area, clearing all that stuff out. And then that'll probably do it for today, but that's what's next. It's 10.30 now at night, and here's an interesting spot. So the way I drew this is I did all the hatching marks up this way, going up uh, from your view, going down. Um, and then I did these marks here to define this plane going down. So I'm gonna have to do a weird change of direction there. Um, it's not going to be too, it's just an interesting little spot. Um, I'm going to carve it off camera so I can think about what I'm doing while I'm doing it. And I'll come back and show you the change of direction that's going to need to happen right there. Just thought it was interesting to point out. 
And there we have the area successfully carved out. I'm working on the foot now and, and to get the kind of curved feeling that I need to get for each little digit that's coming out from the base of the foot. I'm just making little curved cut marks just like that. I cut this line first so it gives me something to cut into so I don't rip this nice clean line that I need to keep, that I need to maintain. So I'll just go into that and it also gives me a nice leading edge for value to uh, to create create the the highlight on the forefront of this digit of this frog's toe. So I just wanted to come on and show you how a nice curved line could define the form of a curved object. Tuesday morning now, and I am completely done with the frog, mostly. All I've got to do is this wand right here. The wand, I'm going to be using long strokes with leaving some marks in between them to kind of give it the effect that it's, uh, it's wood in there. So just some long, curvy strokes, just like this. Slipped it a little there. Towards towards here, it's gonna be darker in shadow, so I'm gonna do little nicky things here and there to keep it random. Nick, Nick. Carving, carving diagonal is one of the most difficult things to do on this wood because you're both going with the grain and against it at the same time. So it wants to peel a little bit more because when you go against the grain, the wood wants to chip. But when you go with the grain, the wood wants to peel. And when you go diagonal to the grain, it wants to do both. So the best way to keep that from going south on you is just to move slow and let the wood peel and chip at the same time. But you don't want it to peel in a way where it's going to rip something that you want to keep for later. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for the bottom. I have just finished probably the hardest work of this whole carving, which is clearing out the background up on the top here, all this, all this. And now I have got the background on the bottom, which is uh, a lot of little marks. There's a lot of, it's broken up into small areas, which might take longer, but it's not as physically demanding as this is because I'm not just moving wood, moving wood. So this is all done. I'm working down here. The next little interesting area is this little sign. So let's go and let's work on that now. This is a little wooden sign that's in the background. It says Loveland. It's, it's an arrow sign that's pointing that way because the frog is running away from Loveland. And uh, I want it to look like it's in, in shadow slightly behind the frog because the frog would be casting some sort of shadow onto it and just make it look like it's pushed into the distance a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I've already scored the, you can see the lines that I've scored right here, here, you know, against the letters there. And I'm just going to carve up to those scored lines with my V gouge. And leaving the, the drawn straight lines through it consistently. I didn't score right here though. On the side of the A, score. And just kind of carve up to all those uh, scored lines and possibly flip it around and do some more scoring so I can carve up to some different lines on the other side to make clean, some clean mark making. But I may not need to. This might be enough. Inside the A here. Just like that. I'm gonna do that to the whole sign and then we'll be finished. And the finished sign. Look at that. It is not quite finished, but it's almost there. 
I've just got the last little bit to do, which is the, the ground, the mud that he is stomping in, but it is, it is almost there. Let me show you how I'm going to tackle this area. But I think I did the fence off camera, but that was pretty, pretty easy. Pretty. See, just kind of some line work that I just kind of followed the lines I'd already drawn and yeah, so that's done. Let me, let me give you an idea of what I'm going to do down here. It's going to be similar to what I've done on the back of the frog there. So I've got this little patch of the mud back here behind the foot. This is kind of the mud that is the furthest away from the foreground with this mud right here being the closest, this mud being the furthest. I'm going to work on this area here. That's that area that I last pointed to. So as, as atmospheric perspective works, things that are closer to you are brighter in color and things that are further away are grayer. And the same can work with just a black and white image. Um, there will be more contrast in the foreground, so in the mud that's closest, and less contrast in the mud that's back here. So I'm not gonna define these lumps as much as I would. I'm just gonna start making like little ticks into the mud that kind of follow the marks that I make. And as I get closer to the front of the foreground, I'm going to take out bigger chunks to make it more contrasty and less gray. Does that make sense? So let me, let me get going. Now this wood down in this area is wanting to peel. I was noticing that as I was working on the fence and areas like that. So I'm gonna do that. And then I'm just gonna take out little chunks. Try to curve the lines as much as I can with the wood wanting to peel. But I'm gonna work similar to that throughout this whole piece. And that's it. The Loveland Frog is carved. I estimate that this took me, I'm thinking about 14 hours. It is 4.23 in the afternoon right now on Tuesday. I started it yesterday morning and I worked on it last night for about two or three hours. So I'm guessing 14, 15 hours of carving went into this particular piece. Finished a little earlier than I thought it was. I thought I was gonna have to carve tonight on it too, but you know, done, I'm good. Look, there it is, the finished piece, all done. And you can see like for scale, how big this one is. Once again, this one's 22 tall, 16 wide. Yeah, and I'll be printing it this week.